My cheeks once were red as the bloom on the rose, but now they're as white as the lily that grows. Young ladies, take a warning. Take a warning from me. Don't waste your affections on a young man so free. He'll hug you, he'll kiss you, he'll tell you more lies than the cross ties on the railroad or the stars. Welcome back, everyone. Um, so I first heard about this. Um, I can't take any credit for this nonsense. I, I found it on, I was inspired with Fuji Weekly and uh, Richie's uh, film sims that he's got up there. Him and his gang of thieves and what they um, they produce is, is awesome. And um, I've been inspired and I just thought, I'll, I'll try this with Pentax just to see how I go. Um, the, the technique, the idea is that you can use, you can get a kind of faded look all within the camera through a double exposure technique. So your first exposure is of the subject or what you want to photograph. And the second exposure is just like maybe a blank piece of paper or card or something like that. I, I couldn't be bothered to take that around with me. So it was an overcast day. So I just pointed the camera up at the sky <laughs> to show the clouds and um, adjust the exposure for the second shot and to get the kind of look that I wanted. But it's a fun kind of idea and exercise to do. You can, you know, underexpose or overexpose the second exposure to get a different type of intensity of fade. And sometimes it works and you mess with it. Sometimes it looks good and sometimes you've just washed it out too much, it's rubbish. But it's just kind of one of those things that's just kind of fun to do with the camera. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I'd, I'd been sick all week and I just needed to get out of the house for a bit of a walk. So I went with a, my best friend, my daughter, and we just went up the street there, grabbed some beers and um, and just tried this out. And, and I just thought that was um, something that was fun. So all of those images were just straight out of camera, no editing at all, except for a border, bordering um, in a Lightroom in Photoshop, but no edit, editing whatsoever. So they're just as is. Um, the, the, the challenges with this is um, I went for um, using a Pentax K1. And this, this camera here has a maximum shutter speed of 1 8,000th. Um, even in its electronic shutter mode, which meant if I was shooting wide open and I was using uh, a, a, an ISO of 512,000 or even more, like a million, whatever, a million, 24, whatever, um, it meant I definitely needed an ND filter on the end of this camera to dim things down if I was going to shoot wide open with this old vintage lens, which was the SMC A. Pentax A SMC 51.7. So, a really cheap lens, like 30 bucks. Um, so yeah, it makes it makes it challenging with that ND filter on because um, looking through that OVF, it's just really dark. I was using quite a quite a strong ND filter, NDX thirty two. Don't even know how many stops that is, but it's it's quite a few. So it's one of those things, the challenges that the, the the mirrorless systems don't have as much because you can chuck chuck an ND filter on, it doesn't impact at all through the EVF. You just still see the exposure how you need it to be. Um, and even for the the more recent um, 
DSLRs and Pentax cameras, they have electronic shutter modes that go past 8,000th of a second. So you may not find you need as strong an ND filter or one at all. Um, but for me, it was a bit of a challenge to do with this with this camera. Um, so yeah, I mean, you don't even have to. I mean, I just shot at like that high ISO to just produce that kind of authentic kind of grain kind of looking to just to push that vibe, just so I could be a real purist and say this is completely straight out of camera. But I mean, obviously your experiments, you could you could just ditch that idea shoot base ISO, not have half those problems, and then just maybe add some grain and post processing if, if that's what you want to do. But I just wanted to be a bit of a purist and see what I could get straight out of camera um, from this kind of little experiment. So, I mean, that's really it now. There's a, it's a really short video. Um, I just thought I would just, you know, do something. And because um, it's been a while and I haven't done anything for a bit and um, just been, um, yeah, sick as a dog all week. I'll, uh, I'll go through the camera settings that I had set up um, for those that are interested, if they want to get an idea of what kind of what I was setting my camera up um, and to enable this. But yeah, hope you found that uh, interesting. All right, till next time. See you later. Okay, so just quickly, these settings then in my camera. So I was saying with the ISO, I was, yeah, I think I was talking shit. I was nowhere near 500,000. I was at 51,000 or um, 102,000. That's the, the ISO that I was kind of running with. Um, and as you can see, my drive mode was set to being multi-exposure and it was just average at two times. And now I did actually try and mess around with changing this to additive or bright. I didn't really see any big differences, so I just kept it as average. Um, my black and white monochrome profile. Um, I had no filter on, no toning at this point. And um, these were the sense of my high, high low key. So you can see it there. I did go for a contrast boost and highlight there. There you go. Those are my settings. And um, I was in daylight and nothing nothing fancy about daylight. I just left it normal. And that was daylight. The other, other than that, I had a shadow correction on at medium and highlight correction on over here. Highlight correction on. And I used uh, center weighted as I had to because it was an old vintage lens. And the way it works is... Um, you know, you take a, um, I use live view quite often just to help me get that and um, that histogram bottom left, just to get that, uh, that correct. Uh, and then I would just take the, the shot and then it would give me a preview. And then you can see there, that it's a double exposure. So it's looking for the next shot. And from here I would, you know, aim at the sky. I would quite often take the ice right down to 100. I didn't need the grain a, a second time. And then I played around with the exposure, sometimes going brighter. You see how it's getting brighter there? That'll be more of an intense fade or sort of lower for a, a more subtler sort of, sort of fade. So maybe go something like that and take a shot. And then, yeah, and that was it. And that was the kind of look that you got. Um, sometimes it didn't vary too much. Um, sometimes it's just kind of subtle, but yeah, you can play around with it and uh, see what you can get. Let, let me know what you get. I'd be interested to see if anybody else wants to have a play with, with this sort of thing. Um, I don't need to give you descriptions for how to do it with um, Fuji because they've got they've got all that kind of descriptions already. All right, hope that helps. Cheers, bye.